Hi, my name is Noah Arliss, a development manager with Oracle Coherence, and today I'll be talking about atomic partition level operations with the 3.7 release. When I refer to partition level atomic operations, what I'm really referring to is the ability or desire to modify entries in a cache atomically. Out of the box, entry processors provide this functionality for a single entry at a time. But what happens if I want to build an application that wants to mo modify multiple entries in, the, in, the, in a single operation? And what if I want to do that across multiple caches? In order to understand how you can achieve atomic partition level operations, you must first understand the basics of how partition caching, also known as distributed caching, works. Data is distributed across storage enabled members by partitions. A specific key is bound to a specific partition for the entire life of the cache. As you can see in this diagram, each JVM is responsible for holding a primary set of keys and a backup set of keys. These sets are based on partitions, where each member is responsible for a unique set of primary partitions and a unique set of backup partitions. In addition, we'll need to understand the basics of entry processors. Entry processors execute code within a cluster using the same principles that are used for data management. They're exposed by the invocable map API, and they are invoked against a key or a set of keys, which is important for us to remember for later on. When an entry processor arrives on the member where the key resides, it will be executed. When the processor completes, a return value can be passed back to the client. Any mutations made against the key are committed to the backing map, and finally, those changes are backed up. The nice thing about using an entry processor is that they are implicitly hold a lock on the key for which they are executing. Therefore, all code executing within the entry processor's process method can be considered an atomic operation against a given key. The best way to think about that is that the contents of your entry processor are completely isolated from any other operation on the same key. This generally frees the developer up from having to worry about concurrency, concurrency concerns in the context of their implementation. When you need to mod modify multiple values, however, the story becomes far more complex. Because entry processors are executed on storage-enabled members for a given key or set of keys, if you want to modify multiple keys, you must first ensure that they are both stored on the same member. As discussed in the introduction slide, keys are bound to partitions, which are bound to members. You can control the way keys are assigned to partitions by taking advantage of a key association interface. You'll want the two keys that you wish to modify at the same time to both return the same value from the getAssociated key method. In order for key association to work across caches, the caches must be running on the same service. Objects in coherence are stored in binary form on the backing map. The backing map is typically the in-memory storage data structure used to contain all objects for a given member. Prior to 3.7, the only way to modify multiple keys in a single operation was to use an entry processor that directly accessed the backing map to change the values where they were stored. Unfortunately, the same isolation semantics provided to you for the entry given to an entry processor are not available to you when modifying the backing map directly. Locks are not held against those additional keys. If the entry processor for any reason were to fail and throw an exception, any modifications made to the backing map would still be committed, whereas the modifications to the entry would be rolled back. And finally, the backups for these operations are not atomic. In this code example, we're doing a very basic transfer from checking to savings in the context of a single entry processor by using the get backing map method. The subtraction to the check from the checking account is safe because the entry processor is holding a lock for the checking account. To get the savings account, we go through the backing map manager context to get the backing map for the savings account on this member. We then look up the appropriate account to add the amount. The savings account is being modified by direct access to the backing map. The key is not locked in this context, and therefore, other operations against the same savings account could interleave, leading to unintended race conditions. In addition, you'll notice that we have to take on the work of serializing the new value as well, because objects that are stored in a backing map are stored in their binary form. 
Now we're going to talk about what's new and available to you in Coherence 3.7. The get backing map entry method was added to the backing map context for 3.7. This front door API allows Coherence to provide callers with the same locking and isolation semantics that they're used to when working with entry processors for a single entry. The keys for the entries returned via this method are locked in the same way that the key is locked for the entry processor itself. As mentioned earlier, operations performed within an entry processor are committed to memory after the process method returns. The get backing map entry method extends this notion further, adding each additional mutation to the entry processor's sandbox. We call it a sandbox because all operations performed in the entry processor are isolated from the real values until it's time to commit those changes to storage. If the entry processor fails for some reason by throwing an exception, all of these changes will be rolled back. In addition, the entry returned by get backing map entry will provide a real a read consistent view because it's sandboxed once you pull it, unlike the backing map where the values can change out from under you. As a developer using this API, you should be aware that it's your responsibility to ensure that you don't cause a deadlock by accessing keys in a bad order. The good news is, if you do write code that will lead to a deadlock, the sandbox will detect it and throw an exception preventing the system from grinding to a halt. If you want to modify multiple entries from within an entry processor, double check your access ordering and always go through the backing map context, never directly through the backing map. In this code example here, we're doing the very same modifications that we made in the pre-3.7 code base, but this time we're using the new API provided. In this example, the modification to the checking account is exactly the same as it was, and everything is safe. The next thing we do, however, is get the backing map context for the savings cache, look up the savings entry via the get backing map entry method, and then we modify it. These modifications to the saving entry is in the same sandbox with the modifications to the checking entry, and the lock is held against the savings key as well as the checking key. When the entry processor is returned, both changes will be committed to the backing map atomically and safely, and the backups will be performed. So, if I want to build atomic partition level operations, we should use the backing map context get backing map entry method. Thank you.